Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. Imperial versus metric, what's best for woodworking? Talk about something to get people riled up. I'm gonna share with you what I think. Stick with me. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Every once in a while we'll do a video and something gets mentioned about Imperial and we get some of the craziest comments and people seem to go nuts over it. It's just a system for measuring wood, whether you like that one or you like metric, it doesn't matter. This is not like the big debate between whether or not low angle planes are better than standard angle, standard angle air. Either way, remember, it's just a way of measuring wood. So please don't go nuts in the comment section. All right. So the question is often asked, Rob, you live in Canada. Why do you use Imperial? Well, let me tell you, I grew up in Canada, obviously. And uh, I grew up where we used feet, yards, inches, and we converted, during the time that we converted, I was actually living in the United States. So in my formative years, it was every, everything was imperial. But now we measure our distances in kilometers. We measure our speeds in kilometers per hour. We measure uh, our fluids we buy in liters, fuel in particular. We still weigh ourselves in pounds. And I still use inches and feet when it comes to my woodworking. I find it's the best system for me. And I know all about metric, but I like Imperial. If you're interested in the history of the two systems, it's actually quite an interesting read and you can look it up. But for the sake of this video, let's just consider that the metric system is based on a 10 and the Imperial system is based on 12. So if we look at this measuring tape that has both, on the Imperial, we deal in 12 inches equaling a foot. And in the metric system, we have 10 centimeters equaling a decimeter. Now, if you take that a little further or go to the next commonly used, you have three feet equaling a yard, or in the metric system, you have 10 decimeters equaling a meter. Now, at first glance, it may seem like woodworking would be easier in metric, but let me give you some food for thought. So a bit of a history lesson. If we turned the clock back 100, 200, or even more years ago and walked into an artisan woodworking shop, no one used the metric system. Artisans were all about finding, generating, and laying out whole number ratios with dividers and straight edges. There were no calculators in shop. No one carried around a measuring tape. And they typically didn't have straight edges with dividers, with divisions on them like we would call a ruler. Yet without any of these, they made very intricate furniture and buildings using the 12 base system. Now the why and how. While using a scale based system on one to 10 works fine to resolve numeric formulas, but you often end up with a decimal fraction of whole numbers, which would require an artisan to lay out to a numbered rule, not to mention having to deal with a decimal place. Another downside of using a base 10 system is that it does not readily break down into whole number fractions. You're limited to one fifth and one half as the only whole number divisions of 10. What about half of 10? Well, that's five. What is one fifth of 10? That's two. What's one third of 10? Well, that's 3.333 forever. And what's one sixth of 10? Well, that's 1.6666 forever. A 12 base system, on the other hand, gives you one sixth, one quarter, one third, and half, one half ratios that are easily broken down into whole numbers. What is half of 12? Six. What's a quarter of 12? Three. What's a third of 12? Four. What's a sixth of 12? Two. Divisions of 12 also come into play in laying out right angles. Break 12 down into divisions of 3, 4, and 5, and you can easily create a right angle by stepping these out with dividers. When designing a piece of furniture, woodworkers design the piece to be pleasing to the eye. Now, the ancients also knew this. Most folks have heard of the golden ratio. Artisans of yesteryear and today rarely use the mathematical golden ratio to design. They just designed to a 12 base system of whole ratios of two, three, four, or six, which automatically builds in the golden ratio. Now, if you wanna learn more about this, I recommend Jim Tolpin's book, By Hand and By Eye. It's an excellent read. Yeah. In, in today's shopper, we have calculators, we have SketchUp, we have machines. The ruler, or the rule, is all important. 
if you use SketchUp or any other kind of CAD program, which I don't, then using the metric system in that circumstance is going to be a whole lot easier. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Almost all metric woodworkers work in millimeters, not centimeters. Most metric woodworkers will tell you a measurement is 320 millimeters, not 3.2 centimeters. And that's because they want to work in whole numbers, not fractional numbers. Very similar to what the old artisans did. If you look back at the metric rule again and compare it, you look at the millimeter divisions. To me, that just gives me a headache. Now, let me explain. There's lots of those. And I find it very difficult trying to read right down to that. But if you look at the standard or the imperial, you, you, the divisions are broken up better. So you've got, there's the one inch mark. You've got quarter. Even the eighth is differentiated from the sixteenth. You've got quarter, half, three quarters. You can break it down into a lot fewer numbers. Whereas over here, you can only break it down into the one mark and the half mark. Then you've got to go in and try to read all these little tiny ones. I find the, met, the uh, standard or the imperial much easier to read. So the other part of the metric system that I don't necessarily like when it comes to building a piece of furniture is the fact that they don't have anything that is comparable to a foot. And what I mean is this. Most metric woodworkers generally work with millimeters to stay away from decimals, and then they jump up to the meter. In my woodworking, I'm generally working or building things between one and six feet. So having an intermediate measurement like a foot makes it a lot easier to understand and see proportions. Take this dresser, for instance. It's a lot easier for me to understand that it's two feet by three feet as opposed to 610 millimeters by 890 millimeters. Now something that woodworkers who don't necessarily like the imperial system find irritating is when it comes to finding the center of uh, an odd sized board. Well, let's say that this is uh, 16 and 3 16 Well, how are you going to divide that in half? Know this, that the old artisans would not have used a measuring tape or even a formula to divide that. They simply would have used a pair of dividers or any other system, something like that, non-mathematical, to step off and find the exact half. Now, I don't expect this video to convert any metric woodworkers into imperial or imperial into metric. All I wanted to do was just give you some reasons why I like to use the imperial system. A lot of it's going to be however you were taught, that's what you tend to stick with. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying it. What really matters is that you're using a beveled down bench plane. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.